The beginning of Pensa International Great Worship Experience await you with Minister Denzel Pempe and Minister Bezalil Holy. The time has come for the Pensa USA Agents of Transformation Conference 2019. This year, it's a four-day power-packed gathering to equip and deploy students and professionals into the campuses and communities of the USA with a kingdom possession agenda. Conferences will be held in Atlanta, Columbus, Arizona, Texas, and New Jersey all in the month of July. If you are in the Northeast, join us from July 4 to 7 at the East Brunswick Hilton Hotel. The life-changing event will host the national head of a church, Apostle Michael Ajumana Marco, the national leader of Pensa USA, Pastor Dr. J. Mike Potofi, several pastors, several apostles, and youth pastors. Joining us will be guest speaker, Elder Dr. Patrick Adunu of Pensa International. Great worship experience awaits you with Minister Denzel Pempe and Minister Bezali Holy.
Time has come for the Pensa USA Agents of Transformation Conference 2019. This year, it's a four-day power-packed gathering to equip and deploy students and professionals into the campuses and communities of the USA with a Kingdom Possession Agenda. Conferences will be held in Atlanta, Columbus, Arizona, Texas, and New Jersey all in the month of July. If you are in the Northeast, join us from July 4 to 7 at the East Brunswick Hilton Hotel. The life-changing event will host the national head of a church, Apostle Michael Ajumana Marko, the national leader of Pensa USA, Pastor Dr. J. Mike Kotofi, several pastors, several apostles, and youth pastors. Joining us will be guest speaker, Elder Dr. Patrick Adunu of Pensa International. Great worship experience awaits you with Minister Denzel Pempe and Minister Bezalil Holy. David was raised from the dead. This is the good news I preach. Always remember that Jesus Christ, a descendant of King David, was raised from the dead. This is the good news I preach. This is the from, from Apostle Paul to his son and pastor of the church of Ephesus, Timothy. He was quite a timid person. Paul encouraged him to come out of timidity and show some boldness. But that is why we have been called. And now he's telling him that he should always remember that Jesus Christ, 
a descendant of King David was raised from the dead. What is he trying to say? He's just trying to tell, let him know that the foundation of the ministry that he has chosen is the resurrection of Christ. It is the cause for effective ministry. The resurrection of Christ. It makes the difference between us and them. The resurrection of Christ makes the difference between Jesus and Muhammad. The resurrection of Christ makes a difference between Christ and any religious guru that you can name. I said last week that Jesus Christ is not a theory. When we come to church, it's not about sound and light. It's not about propositions and hypotheses. No. It is about the reality. Jesus Christ, a descendant of King David, was raised from the dead. This you must always remember. Because Christianity is a life-changing experience. It is not a theory. And today, I want to share with you one of the legacies of the resurrection. The name Jesus. The name Jesus. Paul is saying always remember, but you see, it is not important to keep dwelling on things that are not beneficial. So when he's saying that we should always remember, then I believe that if he knows that dwelling on the resurrection of Christ has benefits that we must keep in focus. Take your eyes off the resurrection of Christ and Christianity, according to 1 Corinthians 15, is useless. Our preaching is in vain. If Christ was not raised from the dead, your coming here is useless. In fact, it will be a waste of time. But always remember that Jesus Christ, a descendant of King David, was raised from the dead. In our quest to possess the nations as a church, we need to have a fresh understanding of the resurrection and the resurrection power. In fact, the benefit of the resurrection was for the church. He came to die. He suffered all that he suffered. Not to just stick a name and pride himself that I have a name that is above everything. Because he is God. He is God. He is God. Ephesians chapter 1. This is the prayer the apostle Paul prayed for the believers in Ephesus. Ephesians 1 from verse 17. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. This is not the gift of wisdom and revelation. This is the spirit of wisdom and revelation. So that you may know him better. Let me just give you something here. When you sit by the word of God, pray for the spirit of wisdom and revelation. So that the spirit of wisdom and revelation will help you to know him better. That you will know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart, so as we sit here, we have eyes of the body. But Paul is saying that there is the eyes of the heart may be enlightened. That is where revelations are born. In the heart, in the spirit. So some of us can come to know God. But we have known him once and our eyes were open to receive him. But that is not the end. It should keep opening so that day in and day out we know him better. So that we can interpret him well to those who are outside there. That is why Peter said, you should always have an answer for those who ask you about your faith. One day Jesus Christ healed a blind man. And then he asked him, what do you see? Then the man said, I see men like trees. How can you live on the planet Earth and be seeing men like trees? If you give this man a cutlass, what will he do? He will cut human beings and kill them. So Jesus said, no. Look, but Jesus touched him once. And he touched him again. He said, what do you see? So I see men correctly. He said, now you can go. Today I pray in the name of Jesus. That he will touch your eyes again. It is not enough to be born again. There's so much to learn. 
and we need to explore it is not enough to be baptized in the spirit and be speaking in tongues when you give a microphone to someone in worship tongues in deliverance tongues everything is tongues no may your eyes of understanding be open it's not always tongues paul says i'll speak with the tongues and i'll speak with my understanding you must play left and right i pray that god will open our eyes it is not enough see when you even speak in tongues it is a transition into power because jesus said you shall receive power when the holy spirit comes upon you he didn't say you shall speak in tongues so the tongues is the initial evidence but the actual thing is power so the tongues is just the beginning but you must enter into the power zone and swim in the power of god and live in the power of god and be the power of god unto salvation for them who do not know him who do not know him i pray that god will open our eyes this morning again that your eyes of understanding be enlightened that you may know the hope to which you have been called this is the anchor if you don't have hope and you don't know the hope to which you have been called that one day he that is to come will come when you have to add zeros you add the zeros when you have to falsify figures you do it may your eyes of understanding be enlightened that one day when the trumpet shall sound the dead in christ will rise and we shall stand before him and every one of us each one of us will give an account of what he did while he was in the body because by that time we had gone out of that body but you give an account of whatever you did while you were in the body we shall stand before the judgment seat of christ so know that one day the trumpet will sound a good and a purposeful life is lived with the end in view you see <laughs> you cannot live your life when you don't know tomorrow it will never be purposeful but have the end in view paul is saying here that i pray that your heart be made to be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which you have been called the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. Now, when you leave the world and you join us, the saints, there may be ways by which we are making money and gaining some wealth, if I should describe it that way. But when you come into Christ, you don't have to continue the same business old tactics and deceiving people he says stop it may your eyes be enlightened now to know the glorious riches of inheritance in, that is in place for the new creation so that the new creation he is saying that don't do things the old way there are still riches in christ but the method is not the same here we don't take what does not belong to us we question envelopes when they are coming to us. We want to know the source. We don't want to just own cars. We want to own cars that we have earned the money to buy. And we are comfortable driving an old car. Sometimes the world thinks that we, 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 we are not rich. But they don't know what they are talking about. They never know what they are talking about. Riches is not just riding the best of the biggest car, no. It is these things that we, 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 we rush for. And then some have made shipwreck of their faith. Shall we rise and pray that God open my eyes of understanding. Let me know you better. To be able to set you apart as Lord. Shall we please be on our feet. Oh Sunday. Holy Ghost, do it again. Shall we lift up our hands? Do it again. In my heart. In my heart. It is heart matter. It is about the heart. Open my heart to see Jesus. To see Jesus. Seated upon the throne, say, Holy Ghost, say, Holy Ghost, do it again, do it 
kepada sanib dia the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope for which you have been called the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people in Jesus name Amen shall we sit verse 19 of Ephesians 1 we are in verse 19 now and his incomparably great power now i see that the apostle paul here was was struggling to find an adjective to properly qualify the power because it is incomparably great incomparable is adjective great is adjective and so he is saying that greatly great power or incomparably incomparable power for us who believe not for apostles, for anyone who confesses Jesus as Lord. This power is available. That is why I don't want us to be talking about witches and wizards and spending quality time just talking about these things. Somebody will come and stand here. So by the time you go home, all the witches in your house, we bind them, we kill them, we slaughter them. You see, these things are for babies. Those who know this incomparably great power, such services do not excite them. They want something better. We are talking about principalities and powers, and you are talking about witches. We are talking about witches. Binding, losing. While people are forward sliding, you are backsliding. So we are talking about serious things. See, the church has to deal with serious issues, not these things. Anointing oil, selling water. If the name of Jesus cannot help you, will water help you? See, I want us to come out of these things. That is the weakness of the church of our day. Yeah. I pray that our eyes of understanding be enlightened. That we will know the hope that is in Christ. And his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is for us. That is why Peter said, what I have, I give in the name. Because the power is for him. So Peter said, I have it. And I'm going to give it to you. For us who believe. The power is like the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead. And seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms far above principalities and powers dominion and every name that is evoked not only in the present age but also in the one to come now verse 22 and god placed all things under his feet this is a picture of what used to happen in the ancient times when a king defeated the foe. See, like David, he will lift his leg like that and stand on the neck of Goliath. When he stood on the neck of Goliath 
Everyone in Israel knew that Goliath was dead. And then when he cut the head and he lifted it like that, the enemy is effectively under his feet. And God placed all these things under his Christ's feet. Now listen, this is Christ's feet. Hold that one. Let's go to Ephesians 2 verse 6. And then we'll come and continue. So we are at his feet. At, under his feet. Christ's feet. Now listen, this one says, And God raised us up with Christ and seated us us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. We just read that God lifted him up far above principalities and powers. And where he is seated, he placed all this under his feet. And the Bible says, God raised us up with Christ. So where are we also seated? Seated with him in the heavenly realms in Christ. And if the principalities and powers are under his feet, they cannot be on our laps. They are under our feet as well. This is the Bible. Don't let people come and disturb us with riches. Don't go and call somebody who says, I'm a champion something. And then when I stamp on the floor, demons will move. Don't mind him. We all have that. It is available to all of us. It is under our feet. Under his feet and under our feet. Hmm. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be the head over everything for the church. For who? The church. He did all this for the benefit of the church. So everything, every victory that he won, the nuggets that are in is for us. Paul says that I pray that your eyes of understanding be enlightened. And I'm also praying for the fresh understanding of the resurrection power. And what the benefit that it has for us. One of the benefits of the resurrection that is available for us is the preaching in the name Jesus. Luke chapter 24 I start from verse 44. Luke 24 from 44. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Now this is to the disciples on the way to Emmaus. They were so confused because they thought that somebody had taken the body away. And while they were discussing, Jesus joined them. And this is some of the things Jesus told them. Then he opened their eyes. These, are, these were eyes of disciples. And I pray that you also be enlightened once more. So they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. So if it is a third day, it is a fourth day, then remember that the Messiah is risen. Because of what has been written. And then 47 is a big one. After the resurrection, this is what is going to follow. And repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. So the legacy that is going to flow out of the resurrection, the first one is the preaching in the name Jesus. The second one is you are witnesses of this. The second one is the witness of the believer. Then the third one is I'm going to send you what my father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. The promised Holy Spirit. But today I will deal with the first one. The name Jesus. In fact, when he actually rose, he told the disciples, and these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. 
And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on the sick and they will get well. After the Lord Jesus has spoken to them, he was taken up into heaven and sat at the right hand of God where the powers were going to be placed under his feet. Not at his feet, but under it. We come to church and we sit at his feet. But for them, they are under his feet. Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere. And the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word with signs and wonders. Hallelujah. So, the legacy, one of the legacies of the resurrection is the name Jesus. Psalm 9 verse 10 says this. Psalm 9 verse 10. This is a very important verse. And I want us to read together if we can. Those who know your name trust in you. For you, O oh Lord, do not abandon those who search for you. Those who know your name trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Those who know your name. Not those who sing about your name. Not those who pray and end with a phrase in the name of Jesus. He said, those who know your name. And the name of the Lord is not Jehovah. It is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. The name of the Lord that was given according to Peter amongst men is Jesus. And those who know this name, not those who have heard or sing or pray in the name, but those who know what it means, what, what the name carries, they will put their trust in him. <laughs> Apostle Nanaya has been saying that, I think there was an issue whether on a bus or something. And people were saying, Jesus, Jesus. And there was this Nigerian preacher, I said, no, one Jesus is enough. <laughs> There's no need to be saying, Jesus, Jesus. Even our women, when they see cockroach, Jesus. I mean, see, when you know the worth of the name, you will really not mention the name of the Lord in vain. Because one Jesus is enough. <laughs> one Jesus is enough. Those who know your name, they will put their trust in you. Are we together? In Acts chapter 3, something happened. Jesus had intentionally left this cripple for Peter. Then after the resurrection, while they were going to church, to the synagogue, then Peter said, this man asks for arms. Give me something, please. You know, I'm crippled. I'm a lame person. I cannot walk. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I have, the legacy that I have received, the name that has been bequeathed to me from the resurrection power, I do give in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Walk. Taking him by the hand, he helped him up and instantly the man's feet and ankle became strong. Now when you read this, especially from the King James, so when he said in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk, the Bible says he lifted him because he was not expecting an inch that you mention the name and the man will keep sitting. So when he said in the name of Jesus, walk, maybe the man was looking at him, say, Madame, for sorry. Sorry. He jumped on his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple court, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate, called Beautiful. And they were filled with the wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. While the man held on to Peter and John, 
all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, fellow Israelites, now listen to what he's going to say. Why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. You are witnesses of this. Now the big one, verse 16. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has given this complete healing to him. As you can all see. By faith in the name of Jesus. It is Jesus' name and the faith in that name that this man stands here walking, jumping, and praising God. The name Jesus. See, recently we went somewhere and it was question time. Now we're talking about how to get people into church on gospel Sundays and then somebody made a contribution and that we must also in our quest to possess the nation target the fetishes those in the shrines and all that the fetish people we call the traditional or the fetish priests then he said that and she targeting them it is technical you need some skills our fathers they didn't even consider them as powerful and then today you are saying that what is technical about bringing a fetish man to Christ? Eh? Look at the way we are disturbing our generation. People are always asking for what is the new way of doing things. It is not about the method, it is about you. That your eyes of understanding be enlightened. Our fathers drove the Tigaris and today you are telling us that winning Tigaris is technical. What is technical about telling a fetish that my friend your God is a dead God. May God quicken us again. We need to wear our strength. And may God open our eyes. And go out there and change our generation for Christ. Now when this thing happened. Peter and John were arraigned before the big men of the day. And they asked them a question. Ask chapter 4 verse 7. Let's go and look at the question. This one was the first question that they had to answer. I don't know whether this one was a technical one. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power or what name did you do this? By what power or by what name did you do this? And then Peter will answer them. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit. That is the difference, my brothers. That is the Peter is not a superman. Even the Bible says, Elijah who called fire from above was a man just like us. And he prayed. It is a spirit power that is causing the difference between us and them. But the spirit is still available. Christ is in us. We only need people who tarry and wait upon God. Who are not willing to rush out of church when it is 11 o'clock they get jittery because they want to go and watch manchester and arsenal they get jittery peter failed if the holy ghost said to them rulers and elders of the people if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed. 
then know this you and all the people of israel it is by the name of jesus christ of nazareth whom you crucified by whom god raised from the dead that this man stands before you healed just know this and this name is available for us how many of them they were 12 about 120 around that time and they were turning their world upside down and look at our numbers and darkness is engulfing our world and we say we have the light they will be filled by the power of the holy ghost so that we can also tell them understand and know this you see if this supposed dead man's name is causing people to walk then you can't say he is dead he is alive in his name then if this man's name is causing people to walk then names are not just for identity let me say that again names are not just for identity names carry authority power and the character of the person who bears the name you see let me just give you some if you you have done a phd and you are a doctor and you are called kwame and Kroma, and you are a ghanian it will be better to change your name because the name dr kwame and Kroma has been effectively taken you see so you 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 worry yourself nobody will recognize you anytime you say dr kwame and Kroma, you say huh do you, do, you, do you relate to the president of Ghana? So change your name. That is why the chiefs, when they go into the throne room and you want a name like Osetutu. Because Osetutu is a revered name. So what they do is that they add numbers. So Osetutu, they say, I like the second. Because now you have to brand the second for yourself. Otherwise, Osei Tutu is a revered name. Names do not just come because of identity. You see, so you have to work hard on your name. When your name is spoiled, you have no reason to live. Go and ask those who have committed suicide. Ask them. Some shame that they anticipate coming. That is effectively going to destroy their name. Instead of waiting for that shame to come and kill them, they kill themselves. You must carry yourself well because your name is not just for identity. It is more than that. All that you are is vested in your name. Sometimes you want to have a pen to write. And then there is this pen on the table. You are looking for a pen. You pick the pen and then someone says, Hey, this pen belongs to. Then you put it down. Then you say, I'm sorry. You will salute the pen unconsciously because the pen bears someone's name and the authority and the character of that person rubs on the pen those who have big names you don't see them in the banking halls yet they deposit and they redraw there's no need for them to go there no you, they, 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 sometimes they can even wait at the tail when they know that the banks have closed and then they will call when they call, such people, they mention their names first. I am so, so, and so. You see that when you are at the receiving end, you hold the receiver. If it was maybe, um, maybe a supervisor who came there and said, hello. Then he said, I'm so, so, and so. He said, sorry, uh, uh, can I get you the manager? He said, yes, I'm waiting. Then you, you realize that the man is not there, but... See the name in the room house, I know. Yeah. So names are not just for identification. I, I'm, I'm telling you for a fact. Even God, the Bible says, He leads us in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. See how God is protecting the name? For His name's sake. So names are not just for identification. It is more than that. They carry so much authority. Then the manager comes to take the receiver. 
Say, I'm so and so say, sir, please can I help you? Say, yes. I want to fetch some money. Um, have you clothes? He knows they have clothes. But listening to what the, the manager is going to say, say, uh, uh, yeah, in, uh, um, yes, I know, sir. But he knows they have clothes. If it were me, they would have shut the door at you. Then the man comes again. He says that I want to, um, I'll ask my driver to come. Will it be okay if he comes in an hour's time? Then he says, oh, say it will be okay, even if it is two hours. Yeah. Then he says, okay, then we shall be there at 6.30. The manager will wait and wait and wait. The man is not coming himself. The driver comes with the man's name. The driver comes with the man's name. Now listen, if you are talking about names, but this name Jesus is not like that name. It is, it is higher than any other name that can be given. What authority do you think this name carries? He doesn't need to be around on this planet. Earth. His name is enough. His name is enough. Whatever he can do, his name can accomplish same. The name Jesus. The name Jesus. Hmm. See, when the angel said he shall be called Jesus, he wasn't saying anything special because Jesus was a common name. But why has this common name become so great a name? Colossians 4 verse 11, please. Colossians 4. Are, are we together? Colossians 4 11. Jesus, who is called Yastus, also sends greetings. So there was somebody called Jesus. That is why Peter said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yeah. He's just trying to identify this particular Jesus. Because there were so many Jesuses. So when the angel said his name shall be called Jesus, he wasn't saying anything wonderful. It was an ordinary name. So the angel said, I know you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth. He is not here. He is risen. Because you have to qualify the Jesus. Because there are so many Jesuses. So Peter was careful to say that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth. With the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good. But how come that this name has become such a revered name? Dr. Charles Blair said this in 1997. I heard him at Laboni Park when he accompanied Morisello on a mission. And this is what he said, and I kept it in my spirit up to today. He said, the bigness of a man is determined by the cause he lives for and the price he is willing to pay to achieve it. The bigness of a man is determined by the cause he lives for. And the price he is willing to pay to achieve it. How big someone is, is determined by the cause he lives for. For many of us, we live for different causes. And if you, you, you calculate, you will see that you are on this planet, you are in Accra. But you see, the, the places where you, you, you trek, is like a triangle. If you like, reflect and check. Some of us are here. And because our jobs are not in Kaswa, you have lived in Accra for 20 years, but some of you may not even know Kaswa. Some live for a cause, but how big a person is, is determined by the cause he lives for and the price he's willing to pay to achieve it. He lived to save humanity and he determined to pay the price to achieve that. Philippians 2 from 5. Let me jump for the sake of time to 9. Philippians 2. Therefore, God exalted him. The therefore means as a result. God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. 
that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Now this should go into your spirit. So when you mention the name Jesus, believe that every knee should bow. In heaven, on earth, and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Therefore, God also. So he didn't just give him the name. It was as a result of what he did. And God lifted his name above every name. That at the mention of the name Jesus, things in heaven on earth and under the earth should bow to the glory of the Father. Hebrews 1 verse 4 says this. Verse 3 and 4. Hebrews 1, 3 and 4. The sun is a radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. I think we have talked about that. Now look at the big one, verse 4. Can we read verse 4 together? So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. He has inherited a superior name. But one would have thought that he was born with the name Jesus. If he had inherited the superior name, it could be something like Yakubu. But the name was not changed. The same Jesus. How, what, what is going on? You see, now, it is like maybe the president of the republic. I don't suspect that when he was in class one, his name was different. I don't suspect. I don't also think that, of course, we all know, it's quite recent, when, that when he was campaigning, his name was different. The same name. But today, you can't just say anything like that against that name. When he's coming here with the same name, they can come and say that the, His Excellency, President Nana Adudankwa, is coming. Now let's say that he's coming to join the service. And he's coming at this very time that I'm preaching. They will bring the name before his face will come. But when they say he's coming, he, he has decided to fellowship with you because he was on his way here and he just decided that there's a church here, so he's coming. When they bring the name, I'll stop preaching. And then there is an executive member here. I'll go and say, So, Dan, what do we do? He said, The man is coming. Also, then we begin to uh, wonder where he's going to sit. Then people will come and ask us, Where is he going to sit? Then we say, This seat. Then they will use some machines to find out whether the seat is safe. And then they will ask, who is going to sit by him? Then he said, the pastor, make sure that no foreign person sits by him. They organize it. Meanwhile, the man is not yet here. And then when he comes, he comes with a convoy. People accompany him. That is what the Bible says that when we meet, we are in a company of innumerable angels because the man is here. If the president of the republic will come and will come with people when he comes he comes with them you don't have any idea the atmosphere in which we are this this we don't play here that is why sometimes i get a bit disturbed people bring their mobile phones here and they receive calls and sometimes the, the ladies crack 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 you goes out without any reference to the king of kings and the lord of lords takes this phone call and then when he comes back he say it was a foreign call foreign call now listen it is these things that is disturbing the church because we don't even understand what it means to meet at at his feet we don't if the president were here you wouldn't behave that way how much more the king of kings and the lord of laws
Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22. But you have come to Mount Zion, that is the church, to the city of the living God. Why? Because he is here. Wherever two or three are gathered in his name, he is here. The heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly. They are not singing the national anthem, but they are praising God. To the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven, you have come to God, the judge of, of all, to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than that of Abel. This is where we have come. We have gathered around his name. We have gathered around his name. And the angels are here. The angels are here. Hmm. The angels are here. So one would have thought that it should have changed his name. But like the president, it is the same name. But now the whole authority in Ghana backs the name. The whole authority in Ghana backs that name. And Hebrews says that he has received a superior name. What it means that the whole heaven and earth backs that name. That name has been singled out to be the name that every other name should bow to. What is important is who gave the authority. You see, you cannot come and say that I'm the president of Ghana. Who will believe you? Where were you sworn in? Have you carried that Afna before? You don't, you have to be sworn in by an authority. When Jesus was still alive, some people went to him and asked him, by what, what authority are you doing this? And Jesus said, okay, I will also ask you, John's baptism, it was from where? Who gave John the authority? And the people went to confer. So if we say that this, the people will say this. If we say this, the people will say this. Let's go and tell him that we don't know. <laughs> then they went to him and they said, we don't know. Then I, he also said, I'll also not tell you. He didn't say, I don't know. I said, I will not tell you. Yeah. So authority is always questioned to find out the source. So when you're talking about Jesus' name that has been given the question is, who gave him the name? You have PhD. You say, oh, praise God. From where? Then you say, University of Suhum. Say, University of Suhum. University of Suhum. <laughs> say, University of Suhum. Gave you PhD. So you see what I'm talking about. Who gave him that superior name? The Bible says, therefore, God also gave him the name that is a source of his authority. And that is why when he rose, he says, all authority has been given to me. By who? By God. And he said, therefore, you also go in the authority. Why are we sitting down when he says we should go? The name Jesus will cause differences at your workplace. The name Jesus will raise the dead. There's life in the name Jesus. There's no need to be singing about the name just like that. No. The name has to be used. Peter said, what I have, I give. So your marriages are not working because you are not applying the name Jesus. Your marriages are not working because Jesus is not mentioned in your home. You are not invoking the presence of that name. You have never held the hand of your spouse. Then let us pray, Jesus. Please come and take charge. Jesus, take charge. All forces that war against our marriage, we bind them in the name of Jesus. You have never done that. Because you have gone to school, the first thing that comes into your mind is to seek a lawyer. You never brought Christ and the name Jesus into the equation. You, sought, you started seeking for lawyers. Because these days, the word incompatibility have moved from the law court and it's now seated in churches. And counselors are telling us that you are not compatible. As if they match human beings. You see? 
when you marry someone that you share many things in common with, you may not even enjoy your marriage. You see, come to the Bible. If God gives you someone, he's going to give you a helpmate. Somebody who is going to complement your weakness. So if you are talkative, he's going to give you somebody who does not open their mouth at all. So that you will learn that in this world, you don't always open your mouth. You might. And then she will also learn that in this world, we talk. And then when you marry, how you can set the marriage up, that is the, the beginning. It's quite difficult. You realize that there will be some kind of irritation because you are not like her and she is not like you. But little by little, with the name Jesus in support, you work it out. You work it out. You work it out. And it will work. I have been so changed by God because of my wife. Because I used to be one plug. But my wife taught me that in this life you cannot be one plug. You have to balance yourself. You have to balance yourself. So please. Let me just try and end. What a name that we have. It soothes our sorrows. It heals our wounds. It drives away our fear. But we don't use this name. We don't care about this man who hung on the cross just so that we shall have his benefit. But we don't care about him. When you wake up in the morning, we don't even think that he's around. We just rush to work because the money guy is calling us. We don't even say, Jesus, I thank you for this blessed day. What are we going to do? What do you think about this? What do you think about that? And he said, Father, I want to thank you for the name Jesus. When there is fear coming to you like clouds of darkness, just ward it off by the name Jesus. And one Jesus is enough. God bless all of us. Oh, love us, son.
Today's word on Men with Maxwell is caring. Hi, my name is John. Jody K. Petra from Mesa, Arizona, who's an educator, wanted me to talk about caring. Many years ago, I made a statement that is kind of well known now. It just basically says people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. That's really true. There was a survey recently taken that basically asked the question, what is the most important question that a follower ask of his or her leader. Interestingly enough, when you think of leadership and vision and success and going somewhere and accomplishing something, you would think it would have to do with action, some kind of a moving ahead behavior. The most requested and the number one question among followers about the leader is this question. Does that leader care for me? They wanted to know more about the fact that the leader cared than the fact that the leader was competent or that somehow that the leader could take them to a higher level. They just wanted to know before they fell in line, does that leader care for me? It's a great word, caring. It should be a part of every leader's life.